Hello everyone! I've got a little book review for you today. I just finished reading this book uh, a little while ago and I thought it was hilarious, so I thought I'd share it with you. It's Three Men in a Boat to Say Nothing of the Dog by Jerome K. Jerome. This book was published back in 1889, and it's about three guys, George, Harris, and the narrator, Jay, plus Jay's dog, Montmorency, taking a boating trip up the River Thames. Jerome K. Jerome originally intended the book to be serious in tone in the vein of popular travelogues of the day, detailing the trip up the river, but accompanied by descriptive anecdotes of the misfortunes that befall the group along the way. However, <laughs> the mishaps ended up taking over the narrative and turning it into a delightful comedy. I randomly ended up reading this. Very late one night, um, as I was trying to go to sleep, I was looking at a list of either underrated science fiction novels or time travel books, I don't remember which, and To Say Nothing of the Dog by Connie Willis was on there. I was considering adding that to my to-read list, or maybe it's already on my read list, I don't know, I'm not sure. <laughs> and then I saw it described as a loving tribute to Three Men in a Boat, To Say Nothing of the Dog, by Jerome K. Jerome, and I thought, hmm, maybe I should see what that's all about first. So I looked that up and read the description, and it was so highly praised and so intriguingly described that I went on Overdrive to see if it was available. It was available. It seems to be one of those books that's always available online, or on Overdrive to read online. So I borrowed it just to give it a look. And I looked at the first page, and that made me chuckle. And then I looked at the second page, and the third page, and I started laughing. And I said to my mom, hey, this is pretty funny stuff and she wanted to know what I was laughing at, so I read her the first chapter, and we had a jolly good laugh over it. I ended up reading the first five or six chapters to her, um, which is unusual. <laughs> There's a heavy dose of absurdity. Jerome's main characters remind me of the types that you would find in a P.G. Wodehouse story, especially a Jeeves one, Bertie Wooster's friends, um, and it turns out Wodehouse was inspired by Jerome's writing. Um, these guys are friends, they're chums, but they argue and insult each other's intelligence, they make some nonsensical decisions, they are prone to be kind of lazy and not too bright, but there's something lovable about them. It also reminds me of the Patrick McManus wildlife books, like A Fine and Pleasant Misery, which I've reviewed, in the tongue-in-cheek way that surroundings and behavior and people's habits are depicted. The book has a unique and charming style. Lengthy titles comically summarize everything that's going to happen in the chapter, and the narrator frequently goes off on tangents. Uh, sometimes the tangents have tangents, and then they will abruptly come back to the present issue, um, just like nothing ever happened. There are probably two long tangents per chapter, and it's almost always done for comic effect. If you're reading the book and you're thinking, ugh, just get to the point already, mm, you're not reading it in the right spirit. Jerome's pontifications, though, often contain serious little nuggets of wisdom and insight, and these add greater significance to what could just be a trivial story. I find a good comedy often has a weighty moment or two that either makes you sad or makes you think, that gives it an extra oomph. There is something odd in that there are occasional sections where Jerome waxes historical or philosophical and the writing becomes flowery and exaggerated, and the prose is so purple that it makes a strange contrast with the otherwise quick and light pace. Um, not gonna lie, these parts can be kind of boring, but I think even that is humorous. I feel like Jerome knew <laughs> that these parts were a little over the top, and he did it anyway. And it's like Jerome, the character, gets on this lofty train of thought and he's carried away with it while we're stuck 
listening to him drone on and on, waiting for him to come back to Earth. Apparently, critics did not like this book. Some of them hated it. But the reading public loved it, and it's become an enduring classic. There have been numerous adaptations for film, TV, radio, the stage, and it's been parodied and imitated many times. It's got a firm place in especially British pop culture, and people even take boat trips using the book as a guide and stopping at all the same places that the characters in the book stopped at. You can do that. They, they are real places. So the travelogue that ended up a comedy still works as a travelogue. There is a sequel titled Three Men on the Brummel about the same characters taking a bicycle tour through Germany. And while it's not as famous and it's not rated as highly, I will probably check it out because I enjoyed the first book so much. I definitely recommend this book. It's fun and a little ridiculous and diverting and just the kind of thing you might be looking for as a light distraction. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you happen to have read this book, please go ahead and share your thoughts on it in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.